Uh, next uh, keynote is Gary Adams, uh, who's Senior Director of Marketing for Silicon Motion. He leads a focus team in defining and promoting enterprise controllers and development platforms that accelerate high performance uh, data center SSD development. Uh, Gary has over 20 years of experience providing uh, innovative leadership in storage products, business solutions addressing market applications and needs. He has various marketing and sales management position experience from a, a wide range of of storage memory component companies, and he earned his bachelor's and master's in electrical engineering at uh, uh, Cal State uh, Chico uh, University. Uh, any of you been to Chico? It's one of the most beautiful places in Northern California. It's a um, beautiful campus. I've been there several times, and I'd um, like to welcome uh, all of you uh, to Gary Adams. Thank you. Well, welcome to the Silicon Motion keynote presentation. It is an absolute pleasure to be back at FMS after a little hiatus. I think if I look at my personal experience back, it was amazing to see all the friends go, ah, you know, look at this. We haven't seen you in two years, and why didn't you call? Right? So, um, so this is, uh, Silicon Motion has been attending Flash Memory Summit for approximately the last 10 years, but this is the first time that we're participating in a keynote. And the reason is, is over the last few years, we've been working to understand the incredible challenges in developing data center SSDs and how we can accelerate the innovation in our customer solutions. So this is the required squint slide. I'll give you a moment. All right, before we get started, we thought we'd share a little bit about Silicon Motion for those that are not familiar with us or our products or our businesses. We are a global leader in supplying NAND flash controllers for solid state devices. And since 2004, we've shipped 10 billion uh, NAND controllers into the storage market. From our first shipments and compact flash controllers, SMI has continued to provide innovative products for SD cards, USB flash drives, and embedded memory controllers. Starting in 2007, we started shipping our first SSD controllers, and we supply more SSD controllers than any other company in the world for servers, PCs, and other client devices. Our customers include all the NAND flash suppliers, and we are a merchant market leader in controllers for EMMC, uh, UFS mobile storage used in smartphones and IoT and other applications. We also supply custom high performance data center, specialized industrial and automotive SSD solutions. So the net is we're about the third of all market NAND controller shipments and we outship our largest competitor from four to one in the space. We are established uh, leader and are recognized by our OEM customers to provide best in class technology and uh, continuing to provide innovation. Okay, so in conclusion, from an SMI understanding perspective, it is likely today that in your digital experience at FMS that our, uh, your digital experience went through an SMI NAND controller. Okay, so let's get to the discussion here. So, um, what we've been looking at is technology transitions and their challenge that present us in SSD design. From our point of view, like anyone else, challenges really give us the opportunity for SSD innovation. We look at four things uh, that are kind of giving us the uh, idea of areas that we need to look at very specifically. Uh, one is the changes in the acceleration of interface speeds. PCI Express today and much, much, many amount, uh, announcements around CXL. We're also looking at NAND uh, technology transitions, the increased layer count and need for multi everything that through a NAND, and the transition from TLC, QLC, and then PLC, and the constant evolution of standards and customer specific requirements. And lastly, what we hear every time we come to a show like this is how do we do application optimization methods for improved performance in QoS? 
So with the acceleration in these market transitions, it's clear that we need to focus on innovations with SSDs, both from uh, SSD design, but also in our business models that we engage with others. So let's get to uh, the uh, PCI Express transitions. Um, it's, you know, I think we, we kind of enjoyed a very long gap between PCI Express uh, Gen 3 to Gen 4. Uh, it was relatively slow and easy to absorb. However, the transition from PCI Express Gen 4 to Gen 5 was really quick. And now, you know, we have PCI Express Gen 6 around the corner, and now they're defining PCI Express Gen 7. So what we need to do is critically look at scaling internal SSD resources and the impact on power and components as we kind of go through this mantra of increasing uh, interface speeds. And for a high performance SSD design, when we look from a, a SSD perspective, we want to make sure that we're focusing on maximizing the interface bandwidth, ensuring that all system design elements are used to maximize that SSD per performance. So what do we do? We look at the CPU resources. We need to ensure that we have and can support enough of the random IOPS performance. In addition, we have to scale the DDR uh, interface bandwidth to a point where it matches the PCI Express interface as well and still contain all the elements and optimizations that we need. Um, in addition, we now have to look at encryption um, and line rate encryption and decryption on the fly. Um, and all this increased performance has to be achieved with power scaling in mind. The appropriate power at the right capacity on the right form factor at the right uh, time. So beyond uh, general connectivity, now let's look at the NAND, NAND uh, technologies. Um, we have to consider larger block sizes, the decreases in geometries that cause us to um, uh, my script just fell off. Uh, OK. Um, so we have to look at the, uh, what's defined as next, we have to look at the improvements in LDPC engine technology to match the rates that we have. Thank you. And the right approaches are for, uh, it's moving again, uh, <laughs> speeds that support uh, hard code to be able to do multiple, to support multiple NAND types. As a side effect of larger NAND sizes, the SSDs must balance simultaneously what we see from multiplane operations and the number of uh, a placement, die placements that we do in the SSD to achieve effective performance. And this will impact power loss protection and total power circuitry within our SSD. Uh, we have observed, and even mentioned the previous speaker, the introduction of machine learning technologies. And when we look at the transition from TLC to QLC, it presents new challenges on multi-pass program, programming models and management algorithms. Having a programmable and flexible flash channel controller is required for these transitions. Standards, where do we start? Standardization and open specifications are critical to reach market adoption. I think we all agree. But what's kind of comical and arguably uh, challenging is when you look at even the SNEA classifications for NVMe SSDs, it becomes very complex and even harder to when you want to explain to someone else. In other areas of standardization, we've seen the NVMe group do very, very well on NVMe 2.0, uh, providing like um, uh, hierarchy for uh, memory structures, as well as providing uh, the super highway for rapid spec adoption. So no longer do we have to wait for an NVMe spec to go through a full ev evolution. We can rapidly go from a technical proposal to a uh, specification. Examples of this have been in some of the most uh, innovations around ZNS, as well as a cur uh, key per IO uh, specifications. In addition, we see continued adaption of security uh, with advanced security features like platform resilience uh, and, and uh, boot and attestation. And we anticipate that we'll continue to see these type of standardizations as we move forward. So we need to define the firmware of everything, 
um, in our architecture so that we have such a flexible uh, ASIC architecture that firmware is able to be adopted and be flexible. And then uh, the appropriate level and use of hardware accelerators to align to this ever-changing landscape. The NVMe SSDs, um, when we get to uh, now move it on to uh, application awareness, I think NVMe SSDs where it's simple plug and play, right? You just kind of put them in there, you're replacing your HDD technology, and the end user doesn't really need to be aware of what's happening with the NAND. What is the NAND? And how do we place things in the NAND? However, when, the, in the, when you're application aware, we start seeing some interesting things happening. And a user can start looking at how do you use the controller resources, as well as how would you manage the way the data is placed and how it is, it is uh, uh, cleaned up within the media so that we can optimize application performance or endurance of the SSD. The industry continues to look for opportunities for uh, application optimization. We've seen different methods, both from standard NVMe as well as host-based FTL user models. And examples of these on our slide, I would say multi-stream writes was one of the first examples where we could start do some isolation within the controller. Open channel SSDs had their life uh, over the last few years, and SMI is one that provides uh, open channel SSDs in production. Also, the introduction of zone namespace drives and the continued work in this space, which SMI supports, and as well as software-enabled flash that continues to gain momentum. And then other new technologies around data, uh, direct data placement or flexible data placement. However, the increasing SSD capacities make as many systems need to support multi-tenancy to have full SSD utilization. And the challenge is how do we properly isolate the ASIC resources to eliminate the noisy neighbor problem. So new solu solutions need to be created to maximize SSD performance while achieving the total overall performance goals that you may have for a single or multi-tenants that use the same resources. So, so Silicon Motion recognized early in our development that SSD controllers with just reference design firmware weren't enough to address this continuous innovation that we see in these areas. So we had to work kind of with purpose-built firmware, ASIC and hardware that could work synergistically from the beginning of the development to meet customer needs. So at FMS this week, we are introducing our, our Mon Titan PCI Express Gen 5 SSD controller. It includes the SSD controller ASIC, standard-based firmware design kits that support all the EDS form factors, as well as the legacy ones, and a layered firmware stack for both uh, standard NVMe and host-based FTL usage models. So our, starting with our controller, the Montitan controller for high performance is Gen 5 by 4. It uh, supports 16 channels running at 2,400 mega transfers provides industry-leading blazing performance. And we were successful at putting into a small form factor, 21 by 21 square package, so that it could fit in all the standard new EDSF form factors. For the Mon, the Mon Titan platform had a lot of interesting things going on as you start reading, but what we wanted to do was focus on three technologies that kind of address these challenges that we have today. And one of them is performance shaping, which is addresses in hardware, ASIC, to be able to provide the appropriate ASIC resources perspective to uh, tackle the multi-tenant uh, environment problem. We wanted to highlight NAND command that maximizes the use of the enterprise NAND uh, in enterprise SSDs, and as well as uh, innovation on our go-to-market strategy in using layered firmware stock to uh, help our customers develop and get to market faster.